All right. Hi, everyone out there um, in Facebook and YouTube land. Um, thanks so much for joining Team Mora tonight. Um, it's been about a month since we've gone live, so I feel a little bit rusty, but um, it's really good to see virtually see you all. I'm really excited about the presentation we have tonight. Um, we will be hearing from local gun violence prevention advocates about a program for families and gun owners that focuses on safe storage and gun safety awareness. It is called the Be Smart for Kids program, and it is super informative, and I think you're really going to get a lot out of it. Uh, before we start, I just want to take a quick moment to give a shout out to Team Mora and the volunteers who have been hard at work um, during the summer season. It is a different type of campaign season right now, as you all know, um, and we are all building new summer traditions together. So Team Mora has been um, out in the community, proudly wearing our masks and helping out at pop-up food distributions in West Chicago and North Aurora. Um, you know, we are standing up for and talking about social justice and equity, amplifying messages and doing our best to just listen and learn um, and be present for those. And we are, have also been celebrating pride on our social media. Um, we've been amplifying LGBTQ voices and um, people that have affected real change in the LGBTQ community. So if you're interested, you can check that out on our social media. And um, I just want to say how lucky I am to have Team Mora behind us. We are a community-powered campaign, and we're constantly um, working for the good of our community. And if you would like to join Team Mora, we need all the help we can get. So um, you can go on our website, um, www.votemora.com. There it is. Um, and sign up for our newsletter and sign up to volunteer, and we will get in touch with you. And of course, um, Part of campaigning is fundraising. So I just wanted to remind you all that tonight at midnight marks the end of our second fundraising quarter. And we've been working really hard to meet our goal um, this quarter. I think we have about $700 to go to meet our goal. So if you are able to help us raise that last bit of money, um, we have a Act Blue site you can um, donate to that should pop up or be in the comments in a little bit. And it will really help us end our quarter strong and show um, Illinois and the people of the 49th district that we are here to work for them. So there's that. Um, if you are inclined, we would really appreciate that. So I just, um, I'm not sure who all knows this about me, but I am a proud member of Moms Demand Action, which is a common sense gun violence violence awareness group. Um, our campaign has been endorsed by Moms Demand Action and every town for gun violence awareness. And I am really proud to wear that red shirt um, whenever I go out. I first heard this presentation about maybe two years ago, the Be Smart presentation at a meeting. And um, it was so informative and really helped shape my thinking about um, responsible gun ownership and gun sense awareness. Um, so how many of us really ask about safe storage practices before our kids go over to a new friend's house? I know before I saw this Be Smart presentation, uh, it wasn't something I thought about or felt comfortable talking about. So this presentation we will hear tonight will give you the tools you need to have those tough conversations with your family members, with your friends, or with your neighbors. And I think it's important before we begin to touch base um, on this timely intersection of gun violence and COVID-19. Just last week, there was an article in the Chicago Tribune about soaring gun sales in Illinois. According to the article in Illinois State Police, more than 40,000 people have applied for a FOID card in a two week period in the beginning of June. So a FOID card is Illinois firearm um, identification card. You need to have one of those before you purchase a gun. And that two week period, um, FOID card applications were up 500% from last year. These numbers are unprecedented and alarming because we already know that 4.6 million children in the United States live in homes with unsecured guns. When you couple this fact with soaring gun sales, and I assume a lot of those might be first time gun owners, um, 
and millions of kids home for the summer with not much to do, no pools or beaches open, camps not running. Um, we have a public health crisis on our hands. There's an increased risk of unintentional shootings and death by children, suicide by gun, and a rise in gun violence. So those are some pretty heavy statistics, but um, what I want us to hold on to is that it's up to us. We can do something about it. We can educate ourselves and our community on gun safety and responsible ownership. So that's what we are doing here tonight. Tonight, you will hear from two presenters about a life-saving program called Be Smart for Kids. And what's really cool about tonight, and I'm super excited, is that we are able to do the presentation in Spanish. So first, in a few minutes, you'll hear it in English. And then around 7.30, 7.35, we will present in Spanish. So let's spend some time together tonight um, learning about the steps you can take to keep your family safe and learning some tools you can use to have those conversations with friends and neighbors. So I'd like to bring on our speakers tonight who are joining us. There's Steve McHugh and Janelle Kira. Hi. Hi. Thanks for Hello. coming. So Steve uh, lives in Geneva. He grew up on the south side of Chicago and his dad was a Chicago policeman. He's a semi-retired senior vice president data analysis for a global market research company. And he is a founding member of the Brady Campaign Chicago chapter, which is another fabulous gun violence prevention organization. Um, he's currently the co-lead for our local Moms Demand Action Group and Be Smart Group in Kane and Kennel County. So welcome, Steve. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having us. And we also have Janelle Piraz, who grew up in St. Charles, and she now lives in Aurora. She has two adorable daughters. She didn't say adorable. I'm adding that, but it's cool. Um, and is a second grade dual language teacher. Um, Janelle was motivated to become involved in Mom's Demand Action after the Parkland shooting. And this is her first time in preventing. Be smart. <laughs> she's especially excited to share it with us in Spanish. So thank you so much, Janelle. And I'll remind everybody once again that we'll be doing the English presentation first and the Be Smart presentation a little after 7.30. Can you help translate that? I got it. Um, vamos a empezar con la presentación de Be Smart en inglés um, y probablemente como las siete y media vamos a cambiar y hacerlo otra vez en español. Wonderful. Thank you. So we're going to start off with Steve presenting um, his Be Smart slide. Okay, let me bring it up here. All right. All right. You can see it. There we go. All right. Thank you, Maura, and thank you, everyone, for being here today. Um, we're going to be talking about Be Smart, a program developed by Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America, as Maura said, uh, to bring together parents and all adults concerned about kids, guns, and safety. I don't have the language skills of Dr. Zike, so Janelle will do the Spanish version when I'm done with the English. And we'll try to answer any questions that you have at the end. Firearms are the second leading cause of death for American children and the leading cause of death for black children. As this slide shows, nearly 1,500 American children under the age of 18 are killed with guns every year an average of four children every day. That's nearly 800 children per year. Additionally, 600 children die by firearm suicide each year, and nearly 100 are unintentionally shot and killed. We know that more than four and a half million US children live in a household with at least one loaded unlocked gun. And that was before uh, COVID, as Maura mentioned, so can't imagine how many there are now. While school shootings and mass shootings typically make national headlines, the reality is that children under the age of 13, uh, gun homicides and gun accidents most frequently occur in the home. 
We believe that most gun owners want to be responsible uh, gun owners. So we are here today to talk about what all of us, gun owners and non-gun owners alike, can do to make sure children don't have unsupervised access to guns. For now, let's leave politics at the door and agree on three things. Number one, we all want kids to grow up happy and healthy. Number two, we each have the right to make responsible decisions about how to protect our homes, families, and communities, including whether or not to have a gun on our home. It's just important to know that you are eight times more likely to shoot yourself or a family member than you are an intruder. Number three, if we can prevent even one child gun death or injury, it's our responsibility to do so. Let's take a few minutes to talk specifically about what the consequences of unsecured guns looks like. On this slide, you'll see just a few headlines from stories across the country. Although we know there are many incidents that go unreported. Here, there are real stories of school shootings, an accidental shooting involving a four-year-old killing his two-year-old brother, which unfortunately happens all the time, and suicide. All of these stories show the fallout when young people get their hands on unsecured guns. No story is quite the same, but all are tragic and all are preventable. Um, just uh, an example, and I, I tell the story a lot because it's etched in my mind. Uh, a few of us from Be Smart last year, last August, uh, were in Elgin for a national night out event. Um, and there we hand out information on Be Smart and answer any questions people might have, come up to the table that we're at. And we also handed out free gun locks. And uh, as we were doing that, I overheard a seven-year-old boy talking to his mom and said, hey mom, can we get one of those locks for grandpa? He keeps his unloaded, or he keeps his loaded gun on the nightstand next to his bed. And I'm afraid uh, Jenny, which was his three-year-old sister, you know, might get her hands on it. Uh, so, it, you know, it's, it's those kinds of stories uh, that we want safe storage. And just for everybody's information too, uh, we hope to have that national night out this year. It's been pushed back um, from August for obvious reasons, um, but we hope to have it on October 6th in Elgin, Aurora and West Chicago, just um, locally. That's great. It's important to remember that even if you are practicing responsible storage or if you don't have a gun in your home, you can't be sure about other homes. You can't be sure about how responsible other people are being. And that's where our Be Smart program becomes helpful. So let's start with the S in Be Smart. Secure your guns in homes and vehicles. 13 million households with children contain at least one gun and the majority of children in gun-owning households know where the gun is stored. Guns should be stored locked and unloaded with ammunition stored separately. Hiding a gun is not securing a gun. Keep in mind that kids may feel a variety of emotions about guns, from curiosity to fascination to fear. As adults, it's our responsible, responsibility to prevent easy access to guns. One study showed that households that locked both firearms and ammunition had a 78% lower risk of self-inflicted firearm injuries among children and teenagers, and an 85% lower risk of unintentional firearm injuries. Some commonly used responsible storage practices include using a cable lock, a lockbox, or firearm safe as well as storing firearms unloaded with ammunition stored separately. Um, increasingly popular is uh, biometric locks, which have the advantage of uh, you can open them with a fingerprint, so very secure. Um, and also you can open it in a matter of seconds instead of you know, fumbling with a uh, combination lock or something if you need to get uh, to it quickly. Uh, unsecured guns also contribute to the staggering number of guns stolen each year. An estimated 380,000 guns are stolen from private gun owners every year. 
Research also suggests that nearly one quarter of stolen guns are taken from cars. So storing a gun in a glove compartment or underneath a car seat is not considered responsible storage. M is for model responsible behavior. Every law abiding adult has the right to decide whether or not to have a gun in the home, but you can't rely on curious kids not to find a gun. As we saw on the slide before, one study showed that the majority of children are aware of where their parents store their guns and that more than one third reported handling the parents' guns, many doing so, so without the knowledge of their parents. Uh, nearly a quarter of parents did not know that the ch uh, child had handled the gun in their house. Modeling responsible behavior means that smart adults make sure that kids don't have the opportunity to access guns. That said, you can't control the environment that your child is, is in all the time. So you should teach them not to touch a gun if they come across one, real or pretend, and give them the tools to get out of dangerous situation and to alert an adult. Uh, we also have info on best practices for talking to children and teens about guns. And you can access that at besmartforkids.org. As we have mentioned, there are approximately 4.6 million US children living in a household with at least one loaded, unlocked gun. That's why you need to ask about firearms in other homes your child visits. That's the A in SMART. For the parents and uh, caretakers here, some things that you might ask about before allowing your child to go to a friend's or another home might include things such as, um, do you have pets in your home? Um, are there car seats uh, for rides? Who will be home for playdates or teen events? Is there, will there be alcohol um, access or anything like that? Um, so those are uh, just some of those uh, kind of things um, that you might ask. So asking about guns in the home should be as natural as asking about any other safety issue. It can seem awkward at first, so try making it part of your general safety conversation. You might try asking uh, via email or text if you're uncomfortable at first. Also, really to make this conversation more common is to volunteer the information yourself if a new child friend is coming to your house, such as, um, just so you know, we have a small friendly dog and we do not have any guns in the house or we do have three guns in the house, but they're all locked and unloaded. Um, so again, just make that conversation uh, more common uh, so that we're all having that conversation. The R um, is recognizing the roles of gun and suicide. Access to a gun can mean the difference between life and death. Most people who attempt suicide do not die unless they use a gun. 85% of suicide attempts with a gun result in death, a much higher fatality rate than any other means of self-harm. All others have a 5% fatality rate. So 85% versus 5% fatality rate. This contributes to the fact that 40% of child suicides involve a gun. If you consider temporarily removing a gun from your home, how can you do that? Where can you bring it? Um, law, uh, local law, law enforcement may be willing to temporarily store your guns. Some licensed gun dealers or gun ranges may be willing to temporarily store your guns. Or you could temporarily store your guns in the home of a friend or family member. Uh, to manage risk for that friend or family member, you should lock any guns that you transfer and not provide the key or code. The National Youth Survey conducted by the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control, showed that 17% of high school students surveyed had seriously considered attempting suicide within the last year. Um, that's a shocking number to me. That's nearly one in five. One study showed that 41% of Adolescents in gun-owning households report having easy access to the guns in their home. As we discussed earlier, research shows that responsible firearm storage is associated with 
decreasing the risk of child uh, firearm suicide. Just some other information I recently heard is that teen girls attempt uh, suicide more often than teen boys do. However, teen boys die more often because they are more likely to use guns. Here is information about how to get help if you do recognize these and other warning signs and it includes uh, the suicide prevention hotline. So I'll just leave it up here for just a minute uh, for you to, to write down or, or to look at. Maybe we can get them in the comments too as, as the presentation progresses, we can get those copied in the comments too maybe. Yeah, good idea more. Yeah. So in addition to uh, suicide going up a lot during COVID, COVID and, and just uh, recently, domestic abuse is way up also. So just wanted to talk about red flag orders for, for a moment. Um, it is known by different names in different states. In Illinois, it's called a firearms restraining order, sometimes um, you know, referred to as the acronym of FRO, yeah. FRO. And just how it works here is that you contact law enforcement or you can petition the court yourself if you are uh, an immediate family member or household member of the person posing the risk. Uh, you must share why you think the person is at risk to themselves or others. The court may issue an emergency order if it finds that the person poses an imminent threat to themselves or others it immediately restricts the person's access to guns. Uh, the person is notified of a hearing date. At the hearing, the court decides whether to issue a final firearms restraining order. If the order is issued, the person is prohibited from purchasing and possessing guns for the duration of the order, which lasts for six months. And any guns in their possession are held by law enforcement. And what happens afterwards is a firearm uh, restraining order can be renewed, but it requires another hearing and the firearms restraining order does not result in a criminal record. Then lastly, the T in Be Smart is to tell. This is the power of, of the Be Smart program. Uh, we have heard from people that because of Be Smart, they know to ask about the presence of guns before their children go to other people's homes, that they have talked to family members about guns in the homes when they have recognized the role of guns in suicide, and that gun owners are modeling responsible behavior as a direct result of Be Smart. So just to recap, uh, S is for secure all guns in your homes and vehicles, model responsible behavior, ask about unsecured guns in other homes, recognize the role of guns in suicide, and tell your peers to be smart. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you, Steve. So um, I, should, I should say that if you have any questions out there, I'll put them in the comment section and we will um, answer them as they come up. Um, I think when I saw that presentation, the most powerful um, part of it is the, um, the risk of suicide by gun, you know, and, and that stat you said about boys uh, versus girls, I remember hearing that and it's sticking with me as well. So it's important, I think, for us to spread that awareness, um, especially now when a lot of us are in isolation and our kids are um, struggling with the ups and downs of this new normal, um, just to be aware. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, I use that text um, that popped up on the screen, the sample text. I have used that almost verbatim. I don't have a small dog, but um, it has been part of my new normal of when my kids are going someplace new, just to say, you know, and if I start the conversation, then it feels um, more normal. And it's Exactly, and it can be about peanut allergies or, or yeah. anything else yeah. that you might ask it's about. Cool. Yeah, there's, mm -hmm. yeah, so. Um, again, I just found this presentation to be sort of a game changer for me when thinking about gun safety. Also, 
modeling and talking about gun safety with our own children. Um, we don't, we are not gun owners, but I still think it's important as this program states to just talk about what to do when you see a gun and um, how to handle it. So I've learned a lot. Great. Yes, yes. Wonderful. So thank you, Steve. So that was our English por portion of the presentation. And um, we will be moving to Spanish. Um, so Steve, you can kind of hang out for a little while and we'll let Janelle okay. take center stage. Bring her on. Hey, Janelle. Hello. All right. So I am going to be very quiet during your presentation because Spanish <laughs> is not even my third language. I'm not a great Spanish speaker, but I am anxious to listen. Um, great. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, let me just get my screen up then. Voy a poner mi pantalla aquí para que todos puedan ver. Y así. Ok. Um, pues gracias por estar aquí hoy a todos. Vamos a hablar del programa de Be Smart. Um, es un programa desarrollado por Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America. Uh, en español, Madres Demanden Acción contra la Violencia Armada. Um, y es para reunir a padres y a todos los adultos preocupados por los niños, las armas y la seguridad. Um, Mar dijo al principio, pero um, una vez más en español, um, soy Janelle Quiroz, um, soy mamá de dos niñas, una de um, cuatro años, una de dos años, um, y soy maestra bilingüe de segundo grado. Um, yo escuché ese uh, de Be Smart por primera vez, um, probablemente hace casi dos años, en uh, una junta de Moms Demand Action. Y um, me gusta mucho el mensaje uh, de ese programa que es algo que todos papás, todos adultos puedan hacer. Um, no es nada de política, de nada de eso, pero es algo que todos podemos hacer para hacer más seguros nuestros hijos. Um, entonces, vamos a empezar. Um, en los Estados Unidos, las armas de fuego son la segunda causa de muerte de los niños y la primera causa de muerte de los niños afroamericanos. Uh, como muestra esa diapositiva, casi 1,500 niños menores de 18 años son asesinados con armas de fuego en los Estados Unidos cada año. Ese es un promedio de cuatro niños cada día. Y es más de uh, 800 niños por año. Además, más de 600 niños mueren por suicidio con armas de fuego cada año y 100 son asesinados por disparos involuntarios. Uh, sabemos que aproximadamente 4.6 millones de niños estadounidenses viven en un hogar con al menos una arma cargada y sin seguro. Aunque los tiroteos en las escuelas y los tiroteos en masa suelen ocupar los titulares de los periódicos nacionales, la realidad es que en el caso de los niños menores de 13 años, los homicidios con armas de fuego um, y también los accidentes se producen con mayor frecuencia en el hogar. Uh, creemos que la mayoría de los propietarios de armas quieren ser propietarios responsables, Uh, por lo que estamos aquí hoy para hablar de lo que todos nosotros, uh, tanto los propietarios de armas como los que no son, um, podemos hacer para asegurarnos de que los niños no tengan acceso sin supervisión a las armas. Um, por ahora, uh, dejen la política en la puerta y acuerden estas tres cosas. Uh, uno, todos uh, queremos que los niños crezcan felices y saludables. Dos, cada uno de nosotros tiene el derecho a tomar decisiones responsables sobre cómo proteger nuestros hogares, las familias y comunidades, y esto sí incluye si desea o no tener una arma en nuestra casa. Um, y tres, si podemos evitar que un solo niño muera o resulte herido con una arma, es nuestra responsabilidad hacerlo. 
Uh, vamos a tomar algunos minutos para hablar específicamente sobre las consecuencias de las armas sin seguro. Uh, en esta diapositiva encontrará solo algunos titulares de historias de todo el país, aunque sabemos que hay muchos incidentes que no se denuncian. Uh, aquí hay historias reales de tiroteos en la escuela, uh, un tiroteo accidental que involucra a un niño de cuatro años Uh, matando a su hermano de dos años y un suicidio. Uh, estas historias muestran las consecuencias de que los jóvenes tengan en sus manos armas sin seguro. Ninguna historia es igual, pero todas son trágicas y evitables. Um, aquí de Be Smart, es importante recordar que incluso si usted almacena una arma de forma segura, o si no tiene una en casa, no puede tener la seguridad que lo hagan en otras casas. No puede estar seguro de si las otras personas lo están haciendo. Y ahí es donde nuestro programa de Be Smart se vuelve útil. Um, ¿Y qué podemos hacer? Podemos aprender con Be Smart. Uh, la S, empezamos con la S. Y significa sea consciente y mantenga sus armas bajo llave en su casa y en los vehículos. 13 millones de hogares con niños tienen al menos una arma. Uh, y la mayoría de los niños en hogares con armas saben dónde está almacenada el arma. O la arma, perdón. Uh, las armas se deben guardar bajo llave y descargadas con la munición por separado. Um, y muy importante, ocultar una arma no es mantenerla segura. Um, tenga en cuenta que los niños pueden sentir una variedad de emociones sobre armas, uh, desde curiosidad hasta fascinación o temor. Uh, como adultos, es nuestra responsabilidad evitar el fácil acceso a las armas. Un estudio demostró que las familias que guardan bajo llave tanto las armas de fuego como las municiones tuvieron el riesgo de 78% menor de lesiones autoinfligidas por armas de fuego entre los niños y adolescentes y 85% menos de riesgo de lesiones por armas de fuego no intencionales. Um, algunos métodos comunes de almacenar las armas incluyen usar un candado de cable o en una caja de seguridad o fuerte, así como guardar armas de fuego sin cargar con la munición en otro lugar. Uh, las armas no aseguradas también contribuyen al gran número de armas robadas cada año. Se estima que cada año se roban 380 mil armas de fuego a los propietarios de armas privadas. Las investigaciones también sugieren que casi un cuarto de los robos de armas se hace de los vehículos. Uh, por lo tanto, guardar una arma en la guantera o debajo de un asiento uh, no se considera un almacenamiento seguro. Um, la M. M modele un comportamiento responsable. Todos adultos respetuosos de la ley tienen el derecho a decidir si tiene o no un arma en su casa, uh, pero no se puede confiar en que los niños curiosos no encontrarán el arma, um, si es por accidente o a propósito. Como vimos en la diapositiva anterior, un estudio mostró que la mayoría de los niños saben dónde sus padres almacenan las armas y que más de un tercio informó que manipularon las armas de sus padres. Mucho lo hacen sin el conocimiento de sus padres. Casi un cuarto de los padres no sabía que sus hijos habían manipulado el ar la arma en su casa. Así que modelar un comportamiento responsable significa que los adultos SMART se aseguran de que los niños no tengan la oportunidad de acceder a las armas. Dicho eso, no puede controlar el entorno en el que se encuentra su hijo todo el tiempo, así que debe enseñarle a no tocar un arma si se encuentra con una, si es real o de mentira, y darle las herramientas para salir de una situación peligrosa o alertar a un adulto. 
Um, también tenemos uh, información de cómo hablar con uh, los niños y adolescentes sobre armas. Um, esta información, el sitio es uh, besmartforkids.org y creo que está en los comentarios de esta, este video. Ok, um, la A. Como hemos mencionado, existen uh, 4.6 millones de niños estadounidenses que viven en un hogar con al menos una arma cargada y sin seguro. Um, por eso necesita asegurarse de verificar si hay armas que no están bajo llave antes de que sus niños visiten otras casas. Es la A de Bismarck. Um, para los padres y cuidadores, um, podemos pensar cuáles son las cosas um, de que hablamos antes de que nuestros hijos van a la casa de un amigo. Um, tal vez alergias o si tienen mascotas, um, si van a estar en el carro, tal vez uh, si tienen la silla infantil um, con um, tiempo enfrente de la pantalla, viendo tele o jugando electrónicos um, o acceso al alcohol. Uh, todas esas son cosas que, de, que tal vez hablamos. Um, yo sé en mi familia, um, hemos hablado con otros de uh, mi hija no comía nada con leche y, y tuvimos que hablar de eso. O um, si vamos a tener otro amigo aquí, siempre mencionamos que uh, tenemos un perro que es más o menos grande y a veces asusta a los niños. Um, pero podemos ver, um, preguntar sobre armas en el hogar debería ser tan natural como preguntar sobre cualquier otro tema. Seguridad, um, cómodo al principio. Um, por lo tanto, trate de hacerlo parte de su conversación de seguridad general. Puede intentar preguntar por correo electrónico o por un mensaje de texto si se siente incómodo al principio. Um, también para hacer la conversación más común, puede darle información voluntariamente. Um, si un amigo no va a su casa, um, por ejemplo, pueden decir, para que saben, tenemos un perro pequeño, pero es muy amable y no tenemos ninguna armas en nuestra casa. Um, unos ejemplos de cómo pueden empezar esta conversación um, para hacerlo más natural. Aquí la R, uh, reconocer el rol de las armas en los suicidios. Es la R. Um, el acceso a una arma puede significar la diferencia entre la vida y la muerte. La mayoría de las personas que intentan suicidarse no mueren a menos que usen una arma. Um, de hecho, que 85% de los intentos de suicidio con una arma tienen como resultado la muerte, uh, la mortalidad mucho más alta que cualquier otro medio de daño autoinfligido. Um, todos los otros medios tienen una mortalidad de 5%. Uh, esto incluye, o oh, contribuye, perdón, a que al hecho de que el 40% de los suicidios infantiles implique, uh, implican una arma. Um, si considera temporalmente sacar el arma, uh, una arma de su hogar, Um, ¿Cómo pueden hacer eso um, si tienen alguna preocupación por alguien en la casa? Um, ¿Y dónde pueden llevarla? Uh, las autoridades locales están dispuestas a almacenar temporalmente sus armas. Um, algunos comerciantes de armas con licencia o campos de tiro también pueden estar dispuestos a almacenar uh, temporalmente sus armas. O bien, ¿podría almacenar uh, temporalmente sus armas en la casa de algún amigo o familiar uh, para controlar el riesgo también para ese amigo o familiar? Uh, debe cerrar con llave cualquier arma que transfiera y no proporcionar la llave o el código. Um, la encuesta nacional de jóvenes llevada a cabo por el CDC mostró que el 17% de los estudiantes de secundaria encuestados habían considerado seriamente el intento de suicidio en el último año. Um, un estudio demostró que 41% de adolescentes en hogares con armas de fuego 
informan tener fácil acceso a las armas en su casa. Um, como mencionamos anteriormente, las investigaciones muestran que el almacenamiento seguro de las armas de fuego se asocia con un menor riesgo de suicidios juveniles a causa de armas de fuego. Um, esta información um, de, son hechos y recursos um, sobre suicidios juveniles por armas de fuego y um, también la línea de prevención de suicidio. Y toda esa información um, durante la presentación en inglés um, creo que están en los comentarios, en la parte de comentarios. Um, so voy a dejar eso por un momentito. Y, um, y otra vez, sí, um, hemos hablado del suicidio, pero también con el abuso um, doméstico. Um, hay situaciones en que tal vez hay un riesgo o um, hay la necesidad de sacar una arma de la casa. Um, con esas órdenes de, um, en inglés es red flag laws, Um, pero de bandera roja, eh, conocido por nombres diferentes en estados diferentes. Uh, aquí en Illinois se llama una orden de restricción de armas. Um, y aquí vemos uh, cómo funciona. Que primero uh, contactar la policía o puede hacer una petición al juez si es un miembro de su familia inmediata o si vive con la persona que presenta algún riesgo. Um, tiene que explicar por qué piensa que la persona presenta un riesgo a sí mismo o a otros. Um, después el juez tal vez dará una orden de emergencia si encuentra que la persona presenta un riesgo a sí mismo o a otros. Inmediatamente se restringe su acceso a armas. Um, la persona está notificada de una fecha de su audiencia judicial y en esta audiencia judicial, el juez decidirá si va a dar una restricción de armas final. Um, si da la orden, la persona está prohibida de comprar o poseer armas por la duración de la orden, que dura seis meses. Uh, cualquier arma que posee está guardada por las autoridades o otra identidad mientras la orden está en efecto. Um, y... ¿Cómo sigue? ¿Qué pasa después? Um, una orden de restricción de armas puede ser renovada, uh, pero requiere otra audiencia judicial. Um, y esta orden de restricción de armas no da paso en un antecedente penal. Entonces, no es permanente nada así. Um, y la última letra, esa es la T, um, que tenga conversaciones. Ese es el poder de ser smart de ese programa. Um, hemos escuchado de personas que debido a Be Smart saben preguntar sobre la presencia de armas antes de que sus hijos vayan a las casas de otras personas, que han hablado con los miembros de la familia sobre las armas en las casas cuando han reconocido el rol de las armas en el suicidio y que los propietarios de armas están modelando un comportamiento responsable como resultado directo de BeSmart. Um, es importante que las personas que poseen y trabajan con armas formen parte de esta conversación. Y una vez más, um, BeSmart, uh, la S, sea consciente y mantenga sus armas bajo llave. M, modele comportamiento responsable alrededor de las armas de fuego. La A, asegúrese de verificar que antes de que sus niños visiten otras casas, que si hay armas están bajo llave. R, reconozca el riesgo, el riesgo de suicidio por armas de fuego. Y la T, um, que tenga conversaciones con sus familias uh, y amigos sobre ese tema y esa información. Um, esa es toda la presentación. Muchísimas gracias. Y um, creo que si hay cualquier pregunta sobre esa información, que puedan añadirlo en um, los comentarios. Okay. All right. 
All right. Wow. Thank you so much, Janelle. That was amazing for your first time oh, presenting. <laughs> yes. That was a lot of really wonderful information. Um, I just truly believe in this program. So I'm really grateful that we are able to um, share it with people in dual language. It's um, a wonderful resource. So thank a you. A new community that it's open to. Yes. So. Yes. So we'll bring Steve back on here and um, maybe answer a few questions. Um, we had a question from Gabby Laboda um, asking what tips for encouraging our kids? What tips do we have for encouraging them to have these conversations? So, you know, I have a 13 year old. So if our kids are getting a little bit older, can they start having these conversations on their own? Oh, Steve, I think, oh, there you go. Can, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so maybe I'll answer this and Janelle can repeat in, uh, in Spanish. Maybe. Um, yeah, I would say that you raise the, the topic or the conversation, depending on what age the child is, um, you know, raise it on your own in the same way you would any other potentially dangerous um, thing in the house, you know, pool or uh, chemicals or cleaners in the house or uh, power tools or anything else. And just say, you know, if you come across a gun, assume that it's loaded, you know, make sure nobody else has access to it. So hypothetical um, example, maybe you find it in the basement and your little sister is with you, take your little sister by the hand, go find an adult and, um, you know, let them know that it's there. And um, yeah, I, I think that would be how it is. And maybe that conversation becomes uh, a bit viral that the children start having those conversations on their own. Hey, that's a dangerous thing. Um, yeah, it's yeah. all about um, making the space to have the conversations uh, about guns. So kids know yeah. it's not uh, something that we can't talk about anymore. It's something that we should all be um, talking about and know how to handle. Exactly right. Yeah. Janelle, we'll let you do a little. Yeah. Había una pregunta de cómo podemos dar la responsabilidad o el poder a nuestros hijos que ellos empiecen a tener esas conversaciones. Y Steve compartió que es como casi cualquier otra cosa de seguridad si hablan con sus hijos. Como las albercas o los químicos o herramientas, cosas así, que um, si en, se encuentran con algo que saben cómo o qué hacer. Um, y parte de eso es uh, si hay algo, si encuentran algo, un arma, que y están con otra persona, como dio el ejemplo de um, si estás con su, uh, su hermanita y encuentran un arma que tomas tu hermanita y salgan de esa situación juntos y que entienden que um, cómo seguir después y que hablan con un adulto um, sobre lo que pasó, lo que encontraron. So, um, es mucho de ser, estar abierto, um, disponible para hablar con sus, sus hijos de cosas así. Yes, great, great. And I think um, I want to say our youngest is four and in his preschool, they did a safety week and they did talk about firearms. You know, it was don't cross the street without an adult, don't touch a burning stove. And there was a section on um, firearms, what to do when you see a gun. So just having that always be a part of what our kids are learning as they grow is, is helpful. Yeah, um, let's see. I don't think we had any other questions, but I have a question. Um, my question is, these are such great presentations. How can people access them? Can you give presentations to school boards or PTOs or church groups? Tell us um, how we can access that. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for that question. It's uh, We'd be more than happy to present to any audiences. And like you said, yes, we have presented at schools, city councils, churches, uh, PTA 
organization. So if anybody here is, um, you know, knows of a group that should be hearing this virtually or when the opportunity comes to do it in person, um, you know, just reach out to us. Um, there is an email, um, our local email, there it is right on the screen there, be smart Kane as in Kane County at gmail.com. Thanks for putting that up and uh, just let us know and, you know, give us a little bit of, uh, of lead time on it, and we'd be happy to set that up. And as we've seen, the presentation really lends itself to virtual right. um, presentations. So now there's no excuse um, to not present to your PTO or something like that. It's really easy, um, easily accessible right now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, do you want to do a, a quick translation of that, Janelle? Yeah. yeah. Um, preguntó sobre si alguien está interesado en tener esa información um, que presentamos esta. Um, hemos presentado muchos, uh, muchos grupos de escuelas, de um, tal vez iglesias o um, en las ciudades, uh, muchas organizaciones diferentes. Si están interesados, um, pueden con, um, usar este, perdón, uh, correo electrónico que está en la pantalla de bsmartcane at uh, gmail.com y um, podemos ver qué podemos hacer. Y como hemos visto, es muy fácil hacerlo así uh, con las computadoras. Um, y estamos, sí, estamos emocionados de seguir compartiendo esa. Wonderful, wonderful. So, For more information on how you can keep your kids and your family safe, you can also go to the Be Smart for Kids website. I think um, we might have that coming up also. Um, BeSmartForKids.org is a really has um, useful tips. There we go um, that you can check out. And if after all of this you are interested in becoming Um, a gun sense warrior, as I like to call us, or an advocate for gun safety in your community and volunteer with Moms Demand Action, um, you can text READY to 64433 um, and, you know, just help us keep our communities safe and healthy and everyone thriving. That's, that's what our ultimate goal is, right? Yeah. Um, so that's all. All we have, is there anything I have missed, um, Steve and Janelle? I don't think so. I would just add, you know, back to the conversation we we're having on talking to kids about this. Um, you know, while we were doing this presentation to the Geneva City Council, um, unknowingly to us, um, some other presenters who were there was um, a Geneva High School cross country team were going to present after us. So I was like, I wonder if they were uncomfortable with us. You know, we were talking about suicide and everything else. And I talked to uh, a coworker who has a son at the high school and said, you know, at a much younger age than that, they have been exposed to so much of this that this is kind of a natural conversation. So do not be concerned about having that conversation. It is not uncomfortable for them. Yes, that is a good point. And the more we have it, the less challenging and uncomfortable it, it is for everyone. So that is a great point. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. And I also, thanks for sharing your story about the gun locks and the giveaways on the um, National Night Out. And you said that hopefully will be happening again in October? October 6th is the, uh, is the current plan date. So yeah. hopefully that will take place, yes. That was great. Yeah, that was good. All right, so that is the end of our um, Be Smart presentation. Again, thank you so much to Steve and Janelle. Um, I'm just grateful that we were able to get this message out there and um, have people learn more about the Be Smart program. So thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you. All thank right. you, more. And I'll just say a quick goodbye to everybody. Um, I'll remind you one last time uh, that we are at the end of our second quarter right now for fundraising. So if um, you have any donations jingling in your pocket, you can um, look at our ACT Blue site, which will be in the comments. And we appreciate that again. Um, so check out um, Team Mora on all of our social media and on our website. And thank you again for joining us. All right.
Good night, everybody. A really great presentation. Wonderful. Bye. All right. Thank you.